the Cocker County Republican Party. Welcome to our kickoff to victory in 2022 Gala Dinner. We assumed control of the party seven months ago and have come a long way in a brief time. We position our party to help win in 2022 and beyond. It is our goal to be your party that will, that will affect positive change and help secure America. With your help and support, we'll be successful. I don't have to tell you what 10 months of Democrat control has done to America. It is obvious if you filled up your gas tank of all groceries lately, we cannot let this continue. Republicans have to win in 2022. Yeah. We have to restore sanity. Who's ready to stand up for America? Who's ready to take our country back? Who's ready to send the message, let's go Brandon to Washington? <laughs> we can save America if we come together as Georgians, Americans, and children of God to elect candidates that will do the right thing, not what is politically correct. To stand up for upholding the Constitution and restoring the shining city on the hill for our children and grandchildren. We thank you for your attendance tonight and your support of the ideals that made America great. We also want to thank Herschel Walker for taking time to speak tonight. Thank you, Herschel. <laughs> this is a party event. Herschel's not getting one dime out of this. He's out of the graciousness of his heart that he's here. Thank you. I'd like to thank Commissioner Bubba McDonald of the Public Service Commission. He's going to bring us a treat here a little bit. Thank Bubba. Thank you. I also want to thank Smoking Temptations for catering our wonderful dinner that you're about to find out is wonderful because the fat boy picked the menu. <laughs> and thank Billy and Rob Howe for hosting us at Lily Pine. It's truly a beautiful place that they should be proud of. Finally, I want to thank our officers and volunteers for making this event possible. They're truly great Americans. Before turning, to, turning this over to the pastor for our prayer, I have a Bible passage I'd like, I think is appropriate for the times we're living. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people which call, call me by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Thank you all. May God bless you and may God bless the United States of America. Good evening. You won't have to listen to me long. I am Paul Hernan, the county GOP treasurer. Uh, I want to thank Dennis uh, for, on behalf of the uh, com committee and the, and the volunteers. He's done a tremendous job for us in the last uh, several months. He's turned this thing into a into the powerhouse that you see here that we've, we've gathered people in this community to come together and, and fight to keep America the way we love America. Um, I would like to introduce to, to give our prayer the uh, Reverend Andy Casual if you would come up and give our, uh, our prayer for the dinner. Thanks sir. Let's pray. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. God, we just bow tonight to uh, people who have gathered who are like-minded and who are concerned, Lord, we, we acknowledge and we know, God, that you're sovereign and that you are good and that you are holy and, God, you are ultimately in control. And yet, God, we see things that uh, we don't like in our country. And so we pray, God, that tonight and other events around this state would be uh, a change agents, Lord, that would see change come in our country, Lord. We are a great country and we've enjoyed liberty and life and the pursuit of happiness for all of our lives. And so, God, we pray 
that that would not change. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us as a country to put you first, Lord, again. And I pray, God, that you'd help us to let folks know, Lord, where we stand and be unashamed of the gospel and be unashamed of our values. God, I pray for tonight's event. I pray that the goals that have been set would be accomplished. I pray, oh God, for a Christian conservative person who shares our values uh, to be in the Senate uh, in 2022. God, I pray for your will to be done. But God, we selfishly pray that uh, we would see change in this country, Lord, and it would begin uh, at the toll booth, at the booth, at the voting booth, Lord. Pray that you would uh, be glorified in tonight. Pray that you'd be with us, Lord, and protect us and watch over us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Get out! I agree with both of those. Um, up next to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance is a, is a local leader that I have admired since I was 16 years old when he was then leading the uh, Marine Corps ROTC group at our high school in Calvin County, Colonel Paul Nagy. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have been uh, granted the. Uh, that sounded good. I've been granted the opportunity to just talk for a minute or two. I'll make it quick. The campaign cycle has already started. The battle has already started. And this one is going to be a little different. I never thought I would see the day when we would have to fight. The political discourse would be over basic, fundamental, first principles of the United States. But that's where we're at. I'll give you one quick example to substantiate what I'm talking about. Most of you by now have seen the discord at a lot of school board meetings throughout the United States, especially up in Loudoun County, Virginia. Based on American principles, schools, and I know this quite well because I just worked in one for 25 years, Schools are supposed to be locally controlled. And parents are stakeholders. That means they help run the place. Now, that's what I thought when I was drawing my paycheck. And that's what guided me. But the other side of the aisle doesn't think that way. And they don't think that way on a lot of things. First principles don't mean a lot to them. The Republican Party believes that the Constitution of the United States and the Bill of Rights are inviolate. They are not to be ignored, misapplied, or politically denigrated. That's what we believe. Therefore, this is not a campaign. This is a crusade, and it has already started. And it's going to take a lot of work by all of us, okay? And uh, you're going to have to put on your body armor, pick up your weapon, and get ready to go. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you, Colonel Najee. Thank you for your service and your service here in this community. Hey, there we go. I think we all can appreciate that and echo those sentiments. Um, up next is going to be a quick update from our uh, chairman of the 8th District, Bethany Ballard. Welcome, Bethany. Got to adjust it for short girl. Um, I'm so excited that Dennis um, asked me to come and speak tonight. We are so appreciative in the 8th District of all Dennis has done. Give him another round. Um, I know that y'all did not come in here, uh, come here to hear me talk tonight, but I just want to share just a couple of things, and I think the sentiments are out there. Um, in June of 1940, and I'm going back a ways, um, France had fallen. We had not gotten in the war yet, and Britain was standing alone. Instead of getting ready to fight, 
the Labour Party in Britain decided it would be a good idea to hold hearings on, to, on why things were going so badly. And Winston Churchill gave one of his most famous speeches in June of 1940, and this is a quote from that speech. And I think you'll know when you hear this quote why I'm, I'm, I'm saying this tonight. If we open a quarrel between the past and present, we will find that we have lost the future. So I think right now in Georgia, we're kind of at a tipping point. We are mad about the election. It didn't go our way. Things went badly and a lot of people are stuck in the past. And we do need to find out what went wrong in 2020. We absolutely do for our election security going forward. However, if we continue to look backward and not ever turn forward, we are going to lose next year. We, I don't know who ran track in here or who was a swimmer or did races. So that, what do they tell you? Don't look back. It will make you lose. Now, some of you have heard this speech at, at the convention. I, my sons are swimmers. My, my younger son, he was winning. He was winning his race, and that little turkey, I could have pinched his little face off. Just as he was fixing to touch the wall, he just looked back just ever so slightly over his shoulder, and he lost that race. He did not focus on the finish. Now, we passed uh, Senate Bill 202, the election integrity bill. It didn't go as far as we wanted it to go, but it did a lot, and it's locked down a lot. We are far better than we were in 2020. And so I really want you, and I urge you, to resist the urge to be stuck in the past. We need to stop fussing amongst each other and calling each other names and trying to figure out who is the most Republican among us and who is the most conservative among us. It is not a race. We are all in this together. I can assure you that the weakest conservative in this room is better than any Democrat who will be elected to office. children, it's time to get our act together, and it is time to unify as a party and stop our bickering and fussing. We can continue to bicker and fuss after we win in November of 22. The day after the election, we can all go back to fussing at each other like family does. <laughs> but right now, let's pull together, let's unify, and let's win in 2022. First rule became known as, high, as a high school tailback and a sprinter, track sprinter uh, from Johnson, uh, Johnson County High School back in the late 70s. He signed a scholarship to play football at the University of Georgia, as you know. Um, <clears throat> the rest is history, as they say. And most of you, well, most of you is very well known. So I'm just going to mention a couple of things. Three time, he, he played uh, football at Georgia for three years. He was a three time consensus All American. Um, he gained over 5,000 yards in those three years and scored over 50 touchdowns. He set uh, 41 University of Georgia individual records while he was there. <laughs> he also received college football's most prestigious award when in 1982 he won the Heisman Trophy. <clears throat> he then left and played professional football for 13 years and was very successful. After retirement from the NFL, he became a successful businessman and he founded Hirsch Walker Enterprises and Renaissance Man Food Services that he alluded to earlier tonight. I was fortunate to be a teammate of Hirsch was at the University of Georgia. We just attended our 40th reunion of the 1980 National Championship team. I believe he's as popular now as he was then. Can you say why? For one thing, he's very gracious. One of the first things he did at the reunion was to get the big guys up and to say thank you to the offensive linemen. 
Now that's after 40 years as a running back who had a lot, all the success I talked about. He brought those guys up in front of his, their former teammates and thanked them for everything they did. So he's st still thinking them years later. First was very real, as he has always been very forthright about some different struggles that he had in his life. I believe he does this in hope that others that struggle, which we all do, will get strength and insight from knowing his story and how he overcame those struggles. Finally, one thing I've learned about Herschel through the years is he's not intimidated. He certainly was not intimidated when we were on the football field. I can attest to that. But more importantly, as he became a famous personality with celebrity status, he consistently, he has consistently shown that he is not afraid to take a stand for things that are important. Even in a society like the one we live in today, that is very hostile to those who do, do that. So without further ado, I introduce a teammate, a friend, and a man I respect, Mr. Herschel Walker. Thank you. Speech, I always acknowledge my Lord Jesus Christ because he said if you don't acknowledge him, he's not going to acknowledge you. Amen. 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 Keith was an incredible teammate, so thank you so much. A Christian man, and so he's a man that I, he's my true brother. Dennis, thank you so much. Uh, this is great, great to gather everyone up, and everyone, thank you for being here. And I also want to acknowledge my wife, Julie, because uh, I'm not on this journey alone. Uh, she's on this journey with me. And I, I want to thank her. And, and as Keith said, that, uh, you know, I always got to thank my team because, you know, I, I got a good team that's running around here somewhere. Mallory, she's right here. I can see her and some of my other team members that's with me because uh, we are to win this, guys. Yes, sir. You know, we are to win this. I told people earlier, I'm like Ricky Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I love finishing first. But uh, I need to tell you this. I don't know if you heard the story about the man that had these two little twin boys. One little boy is always positive in life. No matter what that happened to that kid, he's positive about it. But this other little kid was always negative. No matter what was going on in this kid's life, he was negative about everything. And the father don't know what's going on with these kids because so they're twins, but they're so opposite. So around Christmas time, he tried a little experiment. He put this naked little kid in his room and nothing but brand new toys. But he put this positive kid in his room and nothing but horse manure. And after an hour or so, he looked in on this naked little kid and he was complaining, I don't want this, I want that. I don't want this, I want this. I don't want that, I want this. And the father knew that this kid is never going to amount to anything or nothing ever makes him happy. But he looks in on the kid that's in the room with the horse when he got a shovel. Mm -hmm. Shoving the horse on his shoulders and laughing and singing and having a good time. First thing the father thinks this kid has got to be crazy. <laughs> but he says, son, what's going on? What's going on? The little boy looked at his dad and said, you know, dad, as much horse manure as there is in this room, there must be a pony at the bottom of it. <laughs> We think that right now, we got a lot of crap around us yes, because of what's going on in this country. And you know, people ask me why did I decide to run and who I am. I'm a football player, but I'm going to break y'all off something. <laughs> I decided to run because it's time for us to put people in office that's going to be held responsible for what they do. So right now, they don't want to be held responsible for what they do because the first thing I want to say is if you're going to run for office in the United States of America there's two things you should love. The first thing you should love is America. If you don't love America you shouldn't run and you shouldn't be here. The next thing is you got to love the Constitution of the United States. If you don't love the Constitution why are you here? Because right now we got people in office today that are trying to remove or trying to change the Constitution of the United States of America. 
The Constitution is something too big to change from one party. So I'm gonna tell y'all something you may not like, but this is the honest truth. Democrats are not all wrong, Republicans are not all right, but it's time for us to get back to what is true for America. And what is true for America, we gotta believe in this country, we gotta believe in the people, and we gotta quit giving these other countries our life away to them. Because that's what we've been doing for the last couple of years. We're still fighting over the same things we were fighting over when Jimmy Carter was president. So it's not time for us to solve some problems. What is going on right now, and I still remember this, what is going on right now is, guys, who in the world ever thought of defunding the police? Think about this, who thought of defunding the police? Somebody drinking in their basement one night, decided to defund the police, and they said, Herschel, you gotta speak something that's not gonna be politically correct. Well, I don't care, that was a dumb idea. And people even said that's a dumb idea because other people decided to vote for it as well. It wasn't just one person. There's more people that voted for that. We can't have those people in office, and we know that. So it's time for us to say, let's get them out of office. Let's get people out of office that want to sit on the fence and not make a decision. It's time that we fight for America, not fight for other countries. So you want to ask me why I decided to run for office? I decided to run for office because I got kids that I'm fighting for their generation, not mine. I'm fighting for theirs. We're giving this country away. We're writing a debt that we can't pay, and we know that. But one of the worst things happening is right now the left is doing something very tricky and we got to understand this. You know, now you can't say anything that you want to say because they call you a racist. You know, when you want to speak, you can't say it because they're going to call you a racist so you don't say it, so you try to be politically correct and not say nothing. I'm going to explain racism to you and I explained it earlier to someone. You can't be a racist in today's world unless you're 180 years old. And you guys got to stay with me for here. I'm going to tell y'all something you probably didn't know. So if somebody tell you, call you a racist, tell them this here. I'm not 180, so I'm not a racist. Because at 180, you learn this from your parents. You don't know any better. So that's what you do. Today, we have the television, we have the internet, we have TikTok, we have so many different social media things. You can't be a racist, you're just an idiot that you never learned, that we're all treated the same, and we gotta get out of this racism thing and get back to what the Constitution says, that we have our own free liberties and rights to think and feel how we feel. Where do we get off that you can't say what you wanna say and people are gonna get angry with you? Where do we get off that? We gotta let people continue to do this to us over and over and over again. We elect the same people into office. Bethany, you were 100% correct. We have to come together. You, I heard politicians all the time, and I, when I used to watch them run, how they're gonna do this and do that. They're gonna cure cancer, but they ain't gonna do that. They're lying to you. They can't do anything unless they can bring people together. That's the first thing they got to do is be able to bring people together and get people to vote on that same thing. But I can guarantee you this, I can bring people together. I've been working on it. You saw that Trump and uh, who was it, Senator uh, McConnell came together. Those people don't even like each other. <laughs> hey, McConnell didn't like me at first. I'm going to be honest, he didn't like Herschel Walker, but now he does. <laughs> because I said, you know what, so strange, I would fight for America and I don't care who you are. People want to tell me why am I running for this office? Did you see what they tried to do to Georgia? Do you see what they did? You know, you're talking, and we worried about this voter integrity. Why are we worried about that? That was last election. Why are we worried about the past? Let's worry about the future. Let's worry about what we're going to do right now. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I stay vigilant. So don't worry about the past, let me worry about that. Because I want everyone to get out and vote. Whoever legally to vote, get out and vote, because that is the problem. The problem is we sit and complain. We sit on the couch and we complain how the game is doing. We don't really like the game, so we're not getting in it. Right now it's time for us to get in the game. Because if we don't get in the game, we're gonna wake up tomorrow and not recognize this country. You know, I have a friend named Cesar Rodriguez from Venezuela. Sailors and Cesar Rodriguez was one of the top agriculturists in Venezuela. This is an honest truth. This business was worth $160 million. And all of a sudden he said at one year the government came to him and told him to sell his business. And then a week later came and told him you better sell it because we're going to give you 40 cents on the dollar. They ended up buying his country, his, his business for 40 cents on the dollar. 
And then they told him, you can't take that money out of the country. Well, he got a chance to leave there and bring some of that money to the United States of America because he knew this is where he could get the America's dream man. And today he said, I see that they're trying to do in this country what they were doing in Venezuela. So we got to stop it right now. And the buck got to stop here or we're not going to recognize America. So you want to ask me why am I running for office? Because I'm not going to let that happen. I'm tired of people saying, if I don't like this president, I'm going to leave. Well, leave. That's what we got to tell them. Leave. Get out of here. We don't want you here because the United States of America is the United States of America. One of the things that we just said, we did a pledge allegiance to the flag. Do y'all know what this flag really stands for? Do you know what the national anthem is? I'm going to tell y'all something. You know, uh, being from Georgia, you know, you're educated. And most people that go to Alabama didn't get the education that we got, so we have to get educated. It was interesting because I started reading about the National Anthem. And we hear all how the National Anthem is saying, listen to the words, go read about when the British were trying to take over to all these colonies and stuff, and all of a sudden they went, they, there was somebody that came to get the uh, soldiers, and they were going to swap soldiers and all this stuff, and all of a sudden the British told the, the Americans they got to let that flag down or we're going to bomb. We're going to bomb that flag. We're going to tear it apart. We're going to tear the flag apart. That's the honest truth. They're going to tear the flag apart. And the guy said, well, we can't let that flag down. They start bombing that flag. They start bombing that flag over and over and over. And you know, the flag stayed up. So when they talk about the red glare and all that, they're talking about the red glare of those bombs going over to bomb the United States flag. That flag never failed. The next morning, all that smoke and everything, when it cleared, that flag was still standing up. Well, you know why that flag was still standing up? The dead bodies that as they were dying, they laid against that flag to keep it up. And now we got people want to remove that flag, want to remove the national anthem. We need to tell them to go to another country. This is the United States of America. And you're not going to move that flag out of the way. So that's why we need to start right now. You need to get your head in the game, get yourself in the game, and start electing people to office that is not going to put up with this no more. They're going to say, no, I want law and order. You can call me what you want to call me. You know what? This is what's so funny. You know, I found out the other day I was black. <laughs> is that not amazing? I found out I was black. I'm like, crap, I didn't know that. And then, uh, then I got to call a name. This is honest truth. I got called a name. They, they, they can't even get that right. They called me a coon. Think about this. They called me a coon. I'm like, dude. You call me one of the smartest animals out there in the dirt, uh, out there in the, uh, in the woods. Call me by a dumb animal. A coon is smart. If they knew anything, they lived in the country like I did. They knew a coon who can open a cat can. A coon can do a lot of things. Don't call me some dumb animal. Don't call me that. Because let me tell you, words ain't going to bother me. Because this is bigger than Herschel Walker. This is bigger than my wife. This is bigger than my kid. This is the United States of America we're fighting for right now. And we gotta get in the game and get people to go out and vote and quit sitting on the bench talking about it. We can't talk about this no more, people. Because, you know, Virginia, let's think about Virginia for just one moment. But Virginia, the people, they were, what is critical race theory? How in the heck can you teach that in school? What is, why don't you teach arithmetic? Why don't you teach history, teach social study? We're teaching stuff kids don't need to know. You know, this was so funny. I told people this is the truth. I got a white woman in my life. I got white people in my family today. This is the truth. I got Asian people in my family today. I got Chinese people in my family today. I got Italian in my family today. I got Spanish in my family. I got Native American. I found out a year ago my mom is 40% Native American. They're in my family. I even got a Russian girl in my family today, so y'all know I'm gonna get impeached. <laughs> I don't care because I love her just as much as I love every last one of her because she's giving me three beautiful nephews and I will fight and die for them like I do anyone else in my family because we in America, we're the melting pot. We're the greatest country in the world because we're the melting pot, one of the newest country. And you know what? Why are we one of the newest country but everybody wanna come here? Why are we one of the newest country, but everybody want to come here? Because this was so funny. How in the world I look at football games? And I look at football players talking bad about America. And I'm like, what country can you go and play football and make the money you make it except here in America? Is that one of them? Is that a country you can do that? But let's go to basketball just for a second. Well, all the Europeans come here to play. Let's go to baseball. 
Did y'all see the Atlanta Braves win the World Series? Yeah. Well, stop for a moment. They won the World Series, but that was a couple of times they had MVPs at the game, and they were being interviewed by someone. They spoke a different language. Yes. So that means they're not from America. Right. So they come here for that American dream. So it is time for us to start giving our kids the right to have that American dream and quit letting them teach critical race theory in schools. Why don't every parent stand up like the parents did in uh, Virginia? And you'll see what the Virginia people did. They got those people out of office. They got them all out of office. They said, no, we're not going to stand for this. You saw what happened in South Carolina. They said, we're not going to stand for this. And I just heard, if this is correct, that Kamala Harris come director just left her. Can you believe that? That means she left. That means she quit. Because she's tired of it too. This is the United States of America that we're letting these people destroy this country because they want to talk you down. They want to shout you down. They don't want you to say what we have the guaranteed rights to have to from the Constitution of the United States. We have those rights. We have those rights. And we got to fight for that. We got to quit just cowering down. We got to get uncomfortable. What I mean by getting uncomfortable, you, you guys think that uh, I wasn't comfortable living in my house and having my little company and my wife, we had a good time. But I'm not going to stand for this. So you ask me why I'm running for office, I'm running for office because I'm sick and tired of this right here. I'm sick and tired of this right here. We're asking young people about what's going on in this country. I'm going to tell you something that's so weird. You know, uh, and I told the people earlier today about this. You know, Daryl Johnson, I don't know if y'all know who Daryl Johnson is. Daryl Johnson is a white football player that played with me with the Dallas Cowboys, fullback from Syracuse, I think. Played fullback. He's a white guy. I'm a black guy. We were doing an interview, and a reporter asked us if we felt that Washington Redskins should change their name. I said, why are you asking a white guy and a black guy? Why don't you ask a Native American? You know, what do we got to do with that? Well, I decided to do some research, and the first thing I did is I went to the Seminoles in Florida State. And Alicia Osceola, I went to her first. And she, I said, Alicia, what do y'all think about Florida State being called the Florida State Seminoles? She said, we're happy with that. She said, matter of fact, we take pride into that. And she said, we also have a contract with them. So now I decided to go to the Redskins and start looking at that. But before I got to the Redskins, Gary Clark, who used to play wide receiver for the Redskins, had did a study a couple of years before. And you can look at the study he did. He did three uh, reservations, went to three reservations. And what was funny is 95% of the Native American was okay with the Washington Redskins being called the Washington Redskins. The other 5% didn't really care because they were Cowboy fans. <laughs> we got to get out of this asking people that don't know anything they're talking about to give us solutions to things that we need answers to. We're in the United States of America. We have people that are dying. We have people that are suffering. We have business being destroyed. We have put people in the office that we can't hold them responsible. We put a president in office that he guaranteed he wasn't going to get rid of the pipeline. He guaranteed he wasn't going to get rid of it. Remember that? He wasn't going to throw no jobs away. Before he can get into office, he can get, he get rid of it. Now our gas prices are going up. You know, now the, the supply line is like getting terrible. You see what happened with the cars. Uh, now we don't have cars because China said they can't make no chips because they had a plant to burn up. Oh, okay, I believe that one. Uh, now, now guys, we got to know we can take care of ourselves. Quit depending on everyone, somebody else to take care of you. And then we're giving people a check to stay home. If you don't work, you don't eat. If you don't work, you don't eat. Always, always thinking that we got to give, give, give. Why don't we teach, teach, teach? And if you can work, you got to get out of work. You know, you get too heavy pulling them in the wagon. Sooner or later, they got to get out and help pull. Because we are fighting a war right now. And I'm telling Keith earlier, I think God is tired of uh, these politicians. He want warriors that's going to go to Washington and do the right thing. The right thing is fight for this country. The right thing is to serve the people in the United States of America. It's okay to be generous. It's okay to be generous, guys. You know, then, then let's go to the border for a moment. Because people say, Herschel, you don't talk politics. I don't know why, because I thought politics was what I'm saying, because I'm confused at something. 
It's sort of like at your home. You know, you have you have your home, you have how much land you have, you that's what you have. And we if we don't protect our borders, we don't have a country. I don't know why people don't understand that. We don't protect our border, we don't have a country, people. We're not saying we don't want people to enter this country. We do want people to come in legally because we have rules. We have rules, we have laws. And if we let one person break it, the law is no good. There's people that are coming to this country legally. One of my best friends, and it was a little bit different because he came from Barcelona, France, and Spain, but his name is Francisco Ross. Francisco Ross was from Spain, and he came into this country. He, he, he went through a lot of things to get his car to get legal in this country. Why do we not want to let everybody come into this country? And if this country was so bad, why are they coming? <laughs> if it was so bad, why are they coming? Because we're the greatest country in the world. And we have to protect that. What we got to do it together. So you said, Herschel running for office? No, we're running for office. Because when I get elected, it's going to be we doing it. It's not going to be Herschel doing it because I can't do it alone, guys. We got to do it together. I got to have the Trumpers. I got to have the McConnells. I got to have the Republicans. I got to have the Independents. I got to have them all. Because I'm going to tell you what, the left is getting sneaky right now. You know how they do those magician trips? That's what they did early on. They were talking about racism as they passed this infrastructure bill. So they get you looking over here while they're tricking you over there. So we got to stay vigilant. And don't let them try to fool us with these crazy things about racism. And let me talk about the infrastructure bill because, you know, I'm not that smart, but I read stuff every now and then. You know, at the top of that bill was talking about infrastructure. Remember, they just passed it trillions of dollars. This was so funny. You know how much trillions of dollars are? That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. The top of that bill talks about infrastructure. I don't know. Have y'all seen it? Who read it? The bottom of it talks about climate change. Climate change? Stop for a moment. Do we not have the cleanest air, the cleanest water in the world? If we're going to talk about climate change, God, we better go to China and India. They got to clean their way up. So if we want to talk about infrastructure, why don't we talk about mental health? Sensitive subject. Because mental health can help our law office. Why don't we talk about the homeless population that's going on? Why don't we talk about the drugs? Because you know what's so funny? We were talking about the border a few minutes ago. Do you know that 70% of the drugs coming to this country goes through Atlanta, Georgia? Why don't we talk about funding the police to stop that, to help to stop that? Why don't we talk about respect for the police that everybody can go home safe? People have families. You know, for the last 14 years, I've been at a military base. Every three weeks, I'm at a military base. I was at the base when uh, our president decided that he was going to do the thing in Afghanistan. I watched young men that were so sad because they lost someone at war, and they said, why are we doing this? And I don't have an answer for them because we have put a leader in office that don't seem to care about this country. We need to get him out. We got young men and women over there dying. And you know, so I'm gonna tell you something you may not know. We, you know, there's there's fighting going on right now as I speak right now. They don't call it a war, but they are fighting. People fighting right now for this country, for our freedom right now. And we're over here comfortable doing, making decisions of, that we're making. It's not right. It's not right that we send our young men, our daughters, and our fathers, and our sons, and over there, our wives, over there to fight for something, and we're throwing it away. You ask me why I'm running for office? Because I'm sick and tired of what's going on right now. And I think we all got to get sick and tired because the bucks stop here. God bless you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.